ορίστε ο Μανάβης, παιδιά, απούλα έχει ο Μανάβης. This is a small village somewhere in Greece. It doesn't really matter where. The entire country is made of villages like this one. Population 10, population 50, population 300, population 1000. The scenery and the architecture vary. The everyday life doesn't really. People do what people do and animals do what people allow them to do. It just is what it is, for now, anyway. This particular small village is the one I like to call my hometown. Although this is not where I was born, and although I am here two, three times a year. This is my family's tiny, modest house. It's probably worth nothing, but for me, it's my most valuable possession. It's the memories, the smells. It's where the past meets the present. My past and my present. I'm the only one left of the family now. Just my dogs and I. And my dogs and I spent a good 20 days there last summer. We went for a weekend trip and just couldn't leave. There's something overwhelmingly calm when you're alone in a place that is full of the echoes of loved ones that are gone. It's inviting and all-consuming and I enjoyed the silence and the sadness of being alone there for the very first time ever. I enjoyed every part of the house, every part of the balcony, the garden. Every night I'd have a cigarette on the front porch, alone, just me and myself. And the smells, and the memories. And it was one of those nights that I first saw him. You see, he was a ghost. He was nowhere to be seen during the day. As if he didn't want to bother anyone, as if he didn't want to make his presence known. He'd only come out at night, as if he was apologizing for existing, for being alive. I have a very soft spot for dogs that have just been abandoned. There is a vulnerability about them that makes them open to any stranger as they are looking for food and a chance to feel that they belong. They are so innocent in the beginning. Abandonment is like a beginning, a rebirth. They become something else to what they used to be like a blank canvas there for any random stranger to paint on it or smudge it or just destroy it. I tried to gain his trust for days, well, nights. Suddenly it all became about this dog. Every night he'd appear loyal to our appointment and every night I'd leave the food a bit closer to my open gate and a bit closer and a bit closer. Once he appeared during the day and before I had a chance to make him understand that it's okay to come by during daytime, that it's okay to not be a ghost quietly roaming around at night 
A neighbor shooed him away because he was lying on her flower beds. <laughs> there was a first smudge on the blank canvas I was trying to paint on. I never saw him during the day again. One night he did make it inside my gate. I closed it behind him and before I could catch him he started panicking and trying to escape. He woke up the moron next door who shooed him and tried to beat him with a stick. Eventually, among the confusion, my screaming and his terror, he escaped. I saw him a couple of times after that and every time he'd sense it was me, even from a distance, he would run away from me as fast as he could. How did everything go so wrong? There is no shortage of stray animals in need here. Within the next month I rescued four dogs and a kitten from the area. I came back to Athens with all of them and then a new lockdown came and didn't make it to that village in months. Did I forget about him? <laughs> no, not really. I haven't forgotten any of the ones that got away. They haunt my dreams. They're always there, in the back of my mind, tormenting me. Guilt, the gift that keeps on giving. Amazing how we all begin in innocence and end up becoming guilty. <laughs> when they forbid you to do anything, the need to do it becomes like an obsession. All I've been thinking about for the past months was this little house in that little village. I want to go to my village, I kept saying every time there was a conversation with friends about how we manage with the lockdown. As for the ghost I didn't manage to rescue, I knew he was around. He was so discreet and quiet, he bothered no one and no one bothered him. No one would ever see him, I suppose. I had left food to a neighbor and he would come and eat it when it got dark. A few days ago I got a call from my uncles who live across the street from my little house in the village. My uncles are simple village people. They don't see animals the way you and I do. They're in their 80s and they care for the animals that they have the way they always did. The only way they ever knew. There is this dog, they said. He's blind. He needs help. He needs someone to help him. Most of you watching might not realize what a great leap forward this is for people like them to ask for help for a stray dog they felt sorry for. Rural Greece is decades behind in what we call animal welfare and you just don't blame these people because their life is a reality that is totally different to ours. And the humanity in them when it comes to animals just flickers in the dark sometimes and they don't even realize that it's allowed to even flicker. I asked them if the dog they were talking about was a white and brown one and they said yes. And half an hour later their son who just happened to visit that day sent me this photo. My boy. <laughs> he had been going blind for months apparently and didn't dare show his face around until it was that late. As his vision was abandoning him, his walks around the village shortened. He stayed put in that area, in front of my family home, where I had tried to catch him months ago. And his blindness had him let his guard down and be seen, finally. Maybe since he couldn't see anymore, he felt invisible, as he always wanted to be. I was there the next day. I drove for three hours to get there. I brought everything I thought I'd need and kept praying that he'd just let me help him this time. This entire journey was illegal. 
we're not allowed to relocate in case we spread the virus. In the six, six only reasons for all citizens leaving their home. There is no such thing like, I'm going to rescue a blind dog because no one else will and screw you and your rules. <laughs> Whatever. I didn't get stopped or checked or anything. Even though I had an entire speech prepared in case I was. And at 9 a.m. I was there. Didn't care about the house. Didn't care to visit the cemetery where my entire family is buried. I only cared about this dog. And here he is. And he doesn't know what to do. Deep down, I'm afraid he still hates me. My uncles aren't there to help and I can't wait. I can't. I've waited for months. He's waited for months. This is a dog that stayed hidden and only came out in the dark and here he is now in broad daylight circling me instead of avoiding me as if he knows he needs help. I'm still afraid I will fail, but I didn't. In fact, this is how easy it was, and I'm gonna watch the whole thing now with you because I still can't believe it. The muzzle was not needed, because he is a sweetheart. And as we were leaving that place he was trapped in for months, neither of us looks back. I wish there was a way to tell dogs things that they can understand. I wish there was a way I could tell him what having him safe in the back of my car means, and how from now on things will only get better. But all I can do is stay silent and trust that he will too. Dogs feel comfortable in silence. I'm driving as if I'm the king of the road. Stop me now for a lockdown check if you dare. <laughs> but they don't. We make it to the city in no time. To the vet. And as we arrive at the vet, he puts his head on my lap and stays there. And I start crying and crying because I'm shedding tears that I've been holding on to for months. Months. I hand him over even though I want to stay with him forever. And oh, a tail wag. Yep, a tail wag. Break my heart, won't you? Freddy. I named him Freddy. Freddy is very sick. 
leishmaniasis, heartworm, erlichia, all deadly diseases from freaking parasites. His eyes are not even a priority right now. The priority is that he makes it through the treatments. One step at a time. He'll get there. He has to. That's what he has to do. As for me, what I'm going to do is try and make the whole world see him now. Finally.